Hi everyone, this is Sherry Clark, and welcome to Courage to be Seen. This shows for anyone who longs to take charge of their life, to create more success, accomplish their dreams, and to live in inspiring ways to be powerfully visible and visibly powerful. I will be sharing stories with you from my own career and experiences, from leading engineering teams for the last 20 years, and also from interactions I have been blessed to have with people I've met from around the world. I want to give you the tools, techniques, strategies, and inspiration so you can be the best you. You can achieve the success you desire, personally and professionally. Being authentic, confident, and empowered are the keys to success and the life that you want. You can have the courage to be seen. Sherry Clark, and welcome to the Courage to be Seen, the show that focuses on helping you achieve the success that you desire. I'll share with you the tools and techniques, stories and strategies, so you can have more courage in your life. You can be more authentic, more confident, and more empowered. The keys to success. So today, I want to start with a question. I wonder, have you ever, like, started something? Maybe it's something new. It could be anything from leading a project, maybe you were volunteering at a charity event or, or even volunteering to do something at work, teaching a class, writing a blog. It doesn't really matter what it is, but maybe let's say you started something and you get going, maybe you're even having a little bit of success. And then you start to doubt yourself. You start to wonder if you're enough. Are you even qualified for doing what you are? Do you start feeling like a fraud? Maybe that you even think that maybe you've misled people and that you shouldn't be doing whatever you're doing. If you have any of these feelings, know that you're not alone. In fact, it's actually quite common. 70% of people feel this way at one time or another in their lives. It's so common, it's called imposter syndrome. It's the fear of being exposed as inadequate or unqualified. The Harvest Business Review defines it as imposter syndrome. It is loosely defined as doubting your abilities and feeling like a fraud. It disproportionately affects high achieving people who find it difficult to accept their accomplishments. Many question whether they're deserving of the accolades. So does, does this describe you? Another author that I thought was interesting um, Joyce Freud, the author of The Empress Has No Clothes, she writes, imposter syndrome is the fear and self-doubt that causes people to question their abilities, even in the face of success, and to constantly search for external validation. Simply put, it makes it difficult to recognize and celebrate one's strengths and accomplishments. So I think this is very interesting. Because the first thing, if it sticks out in both these definitions, you're successful. Like if you're not achieving success, then you wouldn't maybe feel like or question you deserve the success. So the imposter syndrome, you know, isn't people that are failing. It's people that are actually successful but don't feel like it. And then, then they question their abilities and they lose confidence and they wonder, can they actually do the work? And it affects many people but it really affects women more, more commonly, or at least it shows up um, more, more often in women. You know, as I researched this, I actually found some conflicting views. The first is kind of what you think, that there's a lot of information out there, it's a mental health issue, um, it's you know, personal, it affects your self-confidence, um, and it's actually very commonly a topic at women's conferences. Most of them that you go to, you'll find something on imposter syndrome. And it comes up a lot, actually, I've seen in mentoring sessions. But there is a contrarian opinion, and I think it's worth at least talking about. The second opinion says we shouldn't use the name imposter syndrome at all. Imposter is almost like a criminal name, you know, that 
doing something wrong. So by labeling someone in imposter means that uh, we're criminalizing their behavior. And then syndrome is something that you talk about medically related. Like, is there something, are this person sick? Or is there something you know, wrong with them? So now we're talking that they're criminal and they're having a medical issue. And you know, this is just like a wrong kind of a name for something that's naturally occurring that people are, hmm, I'm just wondering if I have some, some self-doubt. So the, the second area opinion means that we never should use this name. Um, and then even more so that it talks about, instead of it being like an internal issue, the reason people have imposter syndrome is more from some of the systemic issues we have in business and in culture today. And I think this is an interesting point of view. I always like to kind of look at both sides of, of any arguments and, and maybe we need to dig into this uh, further. So I don't want to dismiss it, but I don't want to concentrate it on today. Now, I don't really like the name imposter syndrome. I never have. And maybe now after I've read while well, it's criminalizing and, and giving people a medical diagnosis, maybe that's why imposter syndrome um, isn't the best name, but we're going to use it today. And we're not going to focus on this more systemic issue because I want to give you some tools that if you're feeling this way, that how do you deal with it? How do you overcome it? How do you not let it bother you? And if we focus completely on what's wrong with businesses and what's wrong with culture, then in, you're not being self-powered. You're not being in looking at it in a way that, hey, I can actually do something about it. So I'd rather talk about at least things that you can use, some tools and techniques that you could go forward with when you are feeling this way. And then we'll leave the, the second point of view um, for, for another day. So as I said, there's 70% of people feel this way, this imposter syndrome at some point in their life. And some are very famous people. So I'd like to talk about a couple of them. The first one is Sheryl Sandberg, right? She's a very successful COO of Facebook, and she admitted that she has struggled with imposter syndrome and has written, every time I was called in class, I was sure that it's about to embarrass myself. Every time I took a test, I was sure that it had gone badly. Every time I didn't embarrass myself, or if I even excelled, I believe that I fooled everyone yet again. One day soon, the gig would be up. You know, in, in what she wrote, one of the key things is I fooled everyone, right? In her mind, she was thinking she didn't deserve it. She probably was very smart on that, on that test, right? She said, ah, oh, I fooled everyone. I was an imposter. Michelle Obama um, also has spoken and written about imposter syndrome, you know, many times and admitted as a young woman, she used to lie awake at night asking herself, Am I too loud, too much, dreaming too big? And then I just got tired of always worrying what everyone else thought of me, she said. So I decided not to listen. So here again, she's talking about having those feelings of being an imposter. And then at some point decided, you know, I'm kind of done with this. I'm just not going to listen. And you can do that too. So what's imposter syndrome look like? You feel like you don't belong, like you shouldn't be doing something. You're afraid that you're going to be discovered by your friends and colleagues, people around you, not strangers, just the people around you as a fraud. That others are going to discover you don't actually deserve the job that you have or your accomplishments. You feel like you succeeded because of luck, not because of the hard work. You worry about Am I good enough? Sometimes people even say, you know, they sabotage their own success because they don't feel like they deserve it. So they make sure they're not as successful as they could be. You find yourself apologizing, even when you haven't done anything wrong. Or you may devalue your worth. And you live in a constant state of anxiety. This is shown by like, maybe you have a big talk the next day. So you overly prepare. You prepare for every question you could ever have. You stay up late, you prepare, you prepare, you prepare. You nail 
the talk. You just nail it out and um, then you worry that, hey, it wasn't that, um, the only way you actually nailed that was the fact that you worked so hard, you put all those hours in, so now you have to redo that. In reality, you didn't have to put that much work in. You, and you just keep doing that over and over and over again. So what type of people experience imposter syndrome? As I said, it is women more than men, but it's not like it's only women. This, this really can be anyone. The first type of people that experience imposter syndrome is perfectionists. That probably doesn't surprise you, right? We've talked about in the past that the easiest way to fail is to try to be perfect because you can't be perfect. So that de by definition, you will be a failure. But if you're trying to be perfect, then any small little thing will really stick out of your mind. So if you're trying to be a perfectionist, the chance is the first thing that you will feel is this imposter syndrome. Experts. So, you know, what are some of the experts that are around you? It could be like, you know, doctors are a great example of an expert. Like we go to them because they have this knowledge that we don't have ourselves. Lawyers, um, sometimes you could think engineers or anyone that has that kind of expert opinion. Many times they're afraid to admit they don't know. Or even if they know, they're afraid that people won't think that they're as knowledgeable as as they are. And so then these type of people many times experience imposter syndrome. New speakers. So let's say someone's given a talk. Maybe they don't feel like they deserve to be listened to. And so they may experience imposter syndrome or they're like teaching a class. Like, hey, why, why do I deserve to be doing this? And so they start worrying have that self-doubt. As you can see, it really can be anyone. Anyone that's not sure about their own abilities. It actually, though, does show up more in minorities. So if you're only female in the room or uh, in any of your minority classes, you know, Blacks and, and uh, different racial groups, when, when you don't have role models around you, other people that you can relate to, then sometimes you start wondering, is what you do good enough? Because you don't have that kind of external validation by seeing similar people to yourself. So the first thing I want you to think about when we talk about imposter syndrome is realize we're really talking about feelings. And I know a lot of people don't like talking about feelings. And um, the good thing is feelings are real. And we need to acknowledge them, but you can um, have some say in kind of what you feel. So I'm not saying that you want to like, not feel and you want to turn away from, from your feelings and pretend they're not there, but you can kind of question like, why am I feeling that way? That is how you feel really a true reflection of the work that you're doing. Um, so while you can do this, I will admit it can be hard. Feelings are kind of um, hard-coded in our brain sometimes, and they can be hard to change, but not, not impossible. So the first step that we want to, to deal with, if we want to overcome feeling like an imposter, is learn how to think like a non-imposter. Right, so if you, if you feel like an imposter, you have to start thinking about people that don't feel like an imposter. And that might sound easy. Actually, it probably sounds incredibly hard, right? But I wanna go over with you some ways that we, we can do this. So if you're wondering like, well, is this really what you're feeling? Is this really how, how you're doing? You can go online. You know, I searched and you can find dozens of tests online. So I'm not going to create my own. I just uh, recommend that you could, if you're not sure what, if what you're feeling is imposter syndrome or not, just search on it, Google it, and um, and take one of the quizzes. Some of the questions that they'll ask you is, are people, are you afraid that people will find that you're not as capable as they think? 
kind of like, and usually most of the, the quizzes will ask you like, this sounds just like me, this sounds not like me, or, or kind of in the middle, maybe it'll rank, you know, one to five, um, how much it sounds like you. Um, another question that shows up in a lot of the quizzes is that you have less knowledge in a subject that people thought, like this would really be the, like the expert, you're trying to explain something and you're afraid people are, will find that you don't know as much as they thought you did. Another one is if you receive praise, do you discount? Is the reason things went well or that you were in the right place at the right time, not because of your hard work? Do you feel people are, around you are better than you? This is a big one, um, I think, in the day of social media because you can't really know what you can trust what you see anymore, right? People spend so much time and they modify their pictures to have like the perfect vacation and the perfect food and the perfect pose and the perfect body. And all that just makes us question ourselves. So don't let the influence of social media, you know, reflect on this and, and you question your self-worth um, in other parts of your life. One interesting question that I found was, if I can do it, then I believe that anyone else can. Like, you start to think of, well, whatever you can do isn't special. So like, well, it must be easy if I can do it. Um, do you obsess over the smallest flaws in your work? And do you avoid evaluations from others? Like you're afraid to even find out what, what people say or, or what people really think of, of your work. So like I said, if you're not sure, maybe it's easy to say, well, yeah, of course I feel like a fraud or yeah, I, I have that self-doubt. As soon as I have a little bit of success, then I find myself kind of sabotaging it. So I'm not overly successful or I'm limiting how successful I can be. Like it's okay if I have one level of success, but I don't want to draw the attention to myself to have that layers two and three. So maybe you know you have imposter syndrome, but if you're not sure, go online, take a quiz, and um, it'll kind of point out to, to you if you're having some of those, those feelings or not. So what I really like to do, though, is take the rest of our time and focus on what you can do about it. Because just finding out, oh, yeah, great, I have a name, I have imposter syndrome, I've had this self-doubt. But if you don't have some tools and techniques that you could start implementing like right now, like you can do something about this. You don't have to just say, oh, I'm sick. Now I have a label I don't have to worry about. No, I want you to actually start doing something different today. And so that way you no longer feel this way. You, that way you can achieve the success that you've always wanted and feel like you earned it. You wanna, you wanna have that feeling in your body like, yes, I did it. So the first thing I'm gonna challenge you to do if you're feeling imposter syndrome is to develop a growth mindset. So if you think about it, if you're constantly growing in all parts of your life, but if you're constantly doing something and growing, that means you're having to try new things. And when you start something new, you start at the beginning. You don't begin as an expert, right? So if you have a growth mindset, that means, hey, I always want to be learning. I always want to be expanding and, and doing more. And that means, okay, I'm going to try this new thing. And I'm going to start at the beginning, and I'm not going to be potentially very good at it. I might fail, but I'm going to keep learning, and I'm going to keep growing. And what you'll naturally feel as you do this, it becomes almost second nature. That, hey, oh, yes, like I start a new exercise routine, and I'm not very strong. But then I work on it, and I get better and better, and I get more successful. And then I decide, oh, I've been lifting weights. Now I'm going to start running, and I start and I'm not very good. And then I work on it and I get better and better. And then maybe it is, I want to start investing. So I'm going to start picking stocks and I pick a few stocks and I'm not very good and I lose a little bit of money, but I keep working on it and I get better. And it doesn't matter what it is. And so what I challenge you is find things in your life that you can work on and grow. And some of them should be at work. You should continue to grow in your career, but they don't all have to be at work. You can focus on becoming a better cook, or you could be focused on really anything. I want to paint, you know, and as you grow and develop in 
areas of your life and you get used to starting as a beginner and then working on things and getting better, it actually will kind of flow into all parts of your life. So develop a growth mindset. The second one is I want you to do some journaling. And I want you to write down the negative thoughts that you're feeling. And maybe it is the self-doubt, the, the feeling like a fraud, that you're non-deserving. Whatever these negative thoughts are, write, write them down. And then next to it, I want you to write down the counter argument of why this isn't true. What, what is the positive piece that you should be thinking about rather than this negative piece? Because you want to fill your mind. You want to fill your life. You want to fill that self-talk within you in positive ways. So dispute each one of those negative thoughts. Write out in your journal, why is that not true? And this is, this you'll find it is huge. That way, when it does come up, oh, I feel like a fraud. No, no, no. In my journal, I wrote X, Y, Z. And this is incredibly useful. So don't, don't dismiss this. Take some time and really acknowledge those feelings that you're having and then write them out. Because focusing on the positive is huge. You can also journal on topics like, you know, what core beliefs do I hold about myself? You know, maybe it's that, you know, you're smart or you're strong or you're trustworthy, uh, you're a hard worker, whatever those core beliefs are, you're a good parent, uh, you're a good partner, um, good friend. Write that out. Another question, answer yourself in your journal is, do you believe you're worthy of love? A lot of people have these stuff out because they don't think they're enough, because we want to feel love. We want to feel connection. Write out your feelings about that. And then the last question I'd ask the journal about is, must I be perfect for others to approve of me? I have to admit, a lot of my life, I, I lived kind of in this realm, thinking I had to be perfect. And I tell you, once you can let go, at least of some of that perfectionism, um, your life just gets so much better. So what are your feelings around that? Focus on being positive. Focus on, on the good in your life. With this, embrace success, even small wins. It doesn't matter what they are, but get used to embracing them. When people tell you a good job, tell them thank you. Don't tell them it was nothing. Don't tell them I was just doing my job. So often we dismiss the praise that we get that um, you can't do that. You can't do that. It makes us uncomfortable. I know it does. I've shared this story before, um, but I'm going to bring it up again. A few years ago, I, I won an award and uh, in Dallas, um, Women in Technology Award. And there's a, it was a big award. My uh, boss was flying in from Atlanta for the, the ceremony. A bunch of people from work were going. And um, it, was, it was a great time, right? Someone at work asked me, like, hey, you know, I, I heard... Uh, your boss is, is, is coming in on Wednesday or whatever day it was. And, uh, and it was like, I dismissed, I kind of like was embarrassed. I was like having to say, yeah, well, he's, uh, he's coming in for this award. Like, cause they were surprised there wasn't a big agenda at work. He wasn't really coming in to, to do anything work related. He was coming to, to allow me to see me receive this award. But instead of embracing it, hey, I got, I, I'm excited, I got this award. It was like, uh, yeah, well, he's coming in um, and we have this award to go to. And You know, you don't wanna be that way. Embrace your success. Tell people thank you when they tell you a good job. Practice visualization. So if you're struggling with whatever it might be, you know, in your mind, see yourself being success. See yourself embracing that. What, is it, what does it sound like? What does it look like? What does it smell like? What it, you know, all your senses. You kind of want to embrace and be as visual as you can, thinking about all your se senses. The more you visualize this, then when you're actually in the situation, you won't feel so much like a fraud because you've already been there. The more you do it, it's like, oh, now it's second nature and you won't have those feelings come up as strong. And you do it over and over again, then you'll, it won't, it, like its effect on you will kind of diminish over time. Not right away, but it, it does, does help. You know, we talked about those negative statements. Make sure in your self-talk, 
that you're changing them to positive statements. If you think about sometimes how harsh we are with our own talk to ourselves, like many times what you tell yourself, you would never say to anyone else. Think about what you're saying. Would you say that to a friend or another colleague? The chance is no. You wouldn't tell them that they're no good or that they aren't deserving. The chance is you tell them, hey, great job. Tell yourself the same thing. Make sure your self-talk is, is positive. If you are having these kind of feelings, I suggest that you find a friend, a coach, a mentor to talk about it. Sometimes just talking through that you're having these, these feelings can be very beneficial. Ideally, it could be a friend. It doesn't have to be anyone special. If you don't feel open enough, though, that you could trust your friend or because it's just you don't, you don't want to even admit you have these feelings. Sometimes a coach or a mentor can be better because uh, it's independent, it's confidential. Um, so, so talk through it and you'll find that maybe once these words get out and you just admit that you have these feelings, that they won't be nearly as, um, as significant in your life. Don't compare yourself to others. Many times that's what this really is all about. Like you are thinking, oh, I'm not as good as the person in the next office. You really have to stop that. You know, you're asked to take over this project for a reason. You're asked to speak for a reason. So just embrace that and go with it and trust in your abilities. I think you'll find that um, you will achieve the success that you want. Another thing that's not always simple is just think about how you hold your body. You know, having a power pose actually does give yourself more confidence. So make sure you're not like trying to like hide from everyone, but sit back in your chair, stand upright and, and have a positive body holding kind of overall and be assertive in just how you stand and how you sit. And you'll find out that that actually will affect your feelings, which then maybe you won't feel with so much self-doubt. Another thing you can do is do kind of what if statements and play in advance. What would you do if? And that way, when it happens, you already know the answer. And then you don't have that chance for self-doubt because you're just now, it's kind of that visualization um, exercise that I talked about before. The last thing is I want you to realize if you're having imposter syndrome, that you are achieving some success in your life. You wouldn't be having imposter syndrome if you weren't being successful. So embrace that. Know that, hey, just the fact that having these feelings means that there's some success in my life that's triggering me to feel this way. And maybe then that'll help you realize that, hey, I am successful. So the way that you can stop feeling like an imposter is to stop thinking like an imposter. If you do this, then more positive feelings will come and fill your life. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I encourage you to subscribe so that way you get a notification when the next episode comes out. Check me out on my website, couragetobeseen.com. You can find out all the information about me and my coaching program and my contact information. You can also um, follow me on Instagram or Facebook where I post motivational messages. So I, uh, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope to talk to you again soon. Thanks. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you've been inspired to take action on at least one thing starting today. To learn more, check out courage to be seen.com. There you'll find my blog and additional resources, including you can download a copy of 10 ways to live a more courageous life. Thanks again for listening and make sure you tune in next time to learn additional ways to have the courage to be seen in your own life.